Hey guys, so this is a Q&A YouTube video uh, on me as a mental health creator on TikTok. If you don't know who I am, my name is Kayla Renee and I make content about borderline personality disorder on TikTok and I make it on Facebook as well with my friend Mick. Um, and I also have my own Facebook page, but Mick and I have one that we run together, Mick's Pages BPD Relatable, if you want to go check it out. Um, so, like I said, this is going to be a Q&A, so I'm going to answer a bunch of questions from you guys, and we'll see how it goes. Challenges I face being a mother with borderline personality disorder and other mental health issues. I get overwhelmed extremely easily when I, when, um, when I have a lot of responsibilities and tasks to take care of at once. Um, it's very easy for me to get overwhelmed and to feel like I can't do it, like I can't be the mother that I want to be. Um, so my advice for myself and for other parents is to rely on your support systems. Don't be ashamed to ask for help when you need it. You do not have to do it all on your own. You do not have to do everything on your own. Go get help. If you don't have a support system, go get help from social services or something like that. Um, they can hook you up with therapy, I think. They can hook you up. They should be able to hook you up with therapy or a place to stay or whatever you need if you need it desperately. Um, I strongly believe in not handling everything on your own like you're some type of superman or superwoman because... No one is Superman. No one is Superwoman. Um, it's very hard. Parenting is very hard already, but it's even harder to do when you're on your own. So my biggest advice, like I said, would be to rely on your support systems and remember you do not have to do it all on your own and you are not alone. The biggest challenge that I face creating mental health content on TikTok would definitely be the stigma that's perpetuated in my comment section. It's died down a lot since I first started TikTok, but sometimes I still get comments that get to me. Um, like I'll have people claiming that I'm just doing this for attention or I'll have people saying, oh, well, you're abusive because you have BPD, yada, yada, yada. And um, I think that the biggest thing that irritates me is when people try to expose me um, because I'll admit and I have always admitted that I was not the best person in the past when I was going untreated and undiagnosed with my borderline personality disorder and even after treatment sometimes um, because healing is not linear. It takes a lot of time to heal and get better from this. Um, I've had people try to expose my misbehaviors and my wrongdoings which is why I've always been super open and honest about the things I've done in the past. The only time I haven't been open about things I've done in the past is when the person that I wronged didn't want me to talk about it. Um, but other than that, I have always been super open and honest about things that I've done and ways that I've wronged people and hurt people because I believe in transparency, full transparency with my audience. My goal as a mental health advocate on TikTok would be to get to a point where we've destigmatized borderline personality disorder along with other mental illnesses. And it's always been a dream of mine to reach 100K. Um, and the reason that I want a lot of followers, a lot of people think that I just want followers because it means more attention for me, but no. The reason my follower count matters to me is because that's how many people I'm helping with my content. That's how many people I'm making a difference in their lives. That's how many people enjoy what I do and are helped by what I do. So that's why the follower count really matters to me. And I really think that one day I will get there. I really believe that it's going to happen and we can all work together to destigmatize borderline personality disorder. Another goal of mine for being a mental health advocate on TikTok is to be interviewed by someone like um, one of those magazine type 
um, things online like Brute, Scene, um, any of those type of things because I've always wanted to get more out there and expand my audience um, again so that I can help more people see that they're not alone and help destigmatize this disorder. The most common misconceptions I see about borderline personality disorder is that we're all gonna be serial killers or that we're all abusive and uncaring and that we only care about ourselves when the reality is a lot of us don't care about ourselves at all. A lot of us care way more for everyone else than we would ever care for ourselves. And sometimes um, we don't really express that in the best way, but that's where it can get misconstrued. And a lot of the stigma and misconceptions and stereotypes around borderline personality disorder are based on famous cases of borderline personality disorder, like for example, Amber Heard. But not everyone with BPD is abusive. And I think that a very important thing to get across here is that um, when you come across someone with BPD or when you're thinking about people with BPD, you need to realize that everyone BPD or not is capable of good and bad. Everyone is capable of being abusive and being kind. Everyone is capable of it, even if they don't think they are. Um, I used to think that I was never capable of hurting someone I loved. And then when I started hurting the people I loved unintentionally, it really um, dug deep into me and it caused a lot of guilt and shame and it just wasn't a good time in my life. And I think that that's something that's very important to get across and for a lot of people to know about people with borderline personality disorder. So the topics that I feel are most important to address on TikTok are the ones that are the least talked about, like uh, symptoms of mental illness that are not talked about very often because of the shame, because of the stigma, because of everything that comes with it, because of people who don't understand it. Um, for example, I recently started talking about homicidal ideations for the first time ever in the public eye um, and my experience with them. And I think that another thing that's very important, like things like homicidal ideations, um, a lack of taking care of yourself, like not showering for weeks on end, not cleaning your room, um, not taking care of yourself, not brushing your teeth. A lot of that is, are the um, worst quote unquote signs of a serious mental illness and a lot of people think it's gross or it's terrifying or it's scary and honestly it's terrifying for those of us who go through it um I feel like the less we talk about it the more shame people have around their symptoms and the less likely people are to get help and that's why I want to talk about these things that's why I will not shy away from talking about the hard points of BPD or any other mental illness that I struggle with because it's very important to me that people know that they're not alone because when you know you're not alone, you're more likely to go and get the help you need and you're more likely to talk about it. And when you talk about it, it means you're not bottling it up because bottling it up can be very dangerous and it can be very hurtful to you. So this one is a really hard question because it's very hard for me to balance my privacy and what I post on TikTok because I'm a very open book. I really share pretty much everything about my life. Um, and I think that that's part of what makes me genuine. Um, I understand that a lot of people have parts of themselves that they don't want the world to see and half the stuff I post I would rather the world not see either but for me as a mental health creator I feel like it's important for me to have everything out there so that people know who they're talking with who they're talking who they're thinking about who they're getting their advice from 
and I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily to have some things kept private. I'm just not a very private person and that's who I am. Um, so there are a couple things that I need to work on keeping private um, because they're not really related to my mental health. But a lot of the things that I post, a lot of people believe they should be private, but I'm trying to destigmatize borderline personality disorder. I'm trying to show the realities of it. I'm trying to show the realities of having a mental illness and what it's like to live with one every single day. So um, that's why I am pretty much an open book. It's why uh, there's not very much about me that you will find that I have hidden from you. Um, I don't really hide anything from you guys. So there's that. So for me to accept my diagnosis, I actually accepted it the second that my therapist um, psychologist told me that I have it. Um, and the reason that it didn't take me very long to accept it was because I finally had an answer as to why I was behaving the way I was behaving and why I was feeling all the things that I was feeling. Now, I'm not saying an answer as in like it's an excuse or anything because no mental illness is an excuse to treat people poorly. But there are things that are like explainable by certain mental illnesses. There are behaviors that when you're going untreated are explained by mental illness. So um, a lot of the shitty things that I've done in my life, I was finally like, wow, so this is why I did what I did, even though I didn't really want to do that. This is why I have these out of proportion reactions all the time to every little thing. And it just clicked for me and it made so much sense. And I was so relieved when that happened. So that is my diagnosis acceptance story pretty much. All right, and that's a wrap on all the questions I have for right now. I'll probably do another Q&A video in the future. Um, comment down below what types of videos you'd like to see from me here on YouTube. So until next time, I'm Kay. I have borderline personality disorder and I love you all.